Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Alright, another entry here. This one picked from a website that I love getting these suggestions from, from the fullwiki.org website. This one is happens to be probably now, at least based on all my past videos, the uh, uh, mafioso of sorts that is the most ruthless one yet. After I give you all this information, I'm sure you'll understand why. Because this is clearly someone who enjoyed what he was doing when it came to the mafia world, when it came to his hitman status, when it came to his assassinations, absolutely just brutal, just absolutely ruthless. And it has to do with this character here. His name was Thomas Patera, but as with anything involving these mafioso gangsters, he has a nickname. In this case, he went by Tommy Karate, and you'll know exactly why uh, his name was Tommy Karate here in a few minutes. But yes, absolutely, this was by far the most heinous, the most horrid, probably the most uh, sociopathic uh, mafioso and gangster yet covered within my series. And uh, thankfully, he's serving life sentence somewhere out there in the U.S. at this moment because of his crimes. So let's go ahead and let's share all the information associated with Thomas Pitera, otherwise known as Tommy Karate. Well, not much info is known about his early life. Same with any other members of the mafioso family. It seems like they just grew up somewhere in uh, New York, in this case, and then somewhere along the lines, eventually became members of a mafioso family. In this case, he grew up in a place called Sheep's Head Bay, which is uh, part of Brooklyn. And during that time period, cut forward a couple of years later, and somewhere within the 1980s, he became a made man, one of those, I guess, uh, su superior ranking positions within the Bonanno family. And it was at this point that he started to make his marks. So he was starting to make his legend grow when it came to his work. If you're wondering why he was named Tommy Karate as his nickname, it's because of this. He was highly skilled when it came to martial arts. This is because he spent, no kidding, more than two years training somewhere in Japan, learning various forms of karate. There was one called uh, a competition of sorts called the Kumiti competition, but he was someone that was highly unusual That's when it comes to the mafia world learning all those traits involving karate. It seemed to just make him more uh, of, 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 of a serious person when it came to his assassinations because all in all, it's been guessed that he has murdered about 60 people and no doubt he was able to use some of his skills there in the martial arts to make it, uh, those, those, those killings easier than before. And yes, he was even known to carry, it seems like, uh, uh, trinkets from Japan, stuff involving karate, including swords. Not sure if he ever did anything as far as uh, keeping using those in kills. I don't think so, but he was someone that carried that too. Also, it seemed like he was someone that uh, was known on the karate side with the New York Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA there, because they, in I guess in their files, whatever they have on their end, they stated that he resembled someone named Tommy Udo, a character that was within the film Kiss of Death. So that seems to be someone that they tied him to as well. But in this case, he was highly successful again when it comes when it came to his sadistic killing. Uh, he was known to murder anybody that he was contracted for, and he was sometimes known to murder people just out of the blue. For example, one of his most notable killings was a guy named Willie Boy Johnson, uh, otherwise known as Wilfred Johnson. He was someone that worked with John Gotti himself and known him for a long time. But somewhere along the way, Willie Boy became an informant and John Gotti found out. In fact, it seems like that, that, that Gotti learned that he was an informant for over two decades. And so, of course, Gotti had to ensure that something was taken care of when it came to Willie Boy. And so he contracted the uh, the uh, Tommy Karate to take care of things and sure enough he did so he shot the Willie boy multiple times as he was walking towards his car and then he did uh, what was considered I guess his most famous hallmark when it came to his killings he was absolutely efficient 
efficient when it came to getting rid of evidence. In his case, it had to do anytime he killed somebody, he would always cut people up into six pieces. Why six specifically? I don't know. But in that case, that was his hallmark. And then he would plant them within various portions of Brooklyn. In fact, one of his most famous haunts happened to be a mafia graveyard by the borough of Staten Island near a place called William T. Davis Bird Sanctuary. There, he would meticulously ensure that the body parts were spread out over multiple areas, so that way it was very hard, especially after much decomposition, to try to piece the bodies together, so to speak. And, and also he was one of the known few known um, mafioso figures to take proactive measures when it came to the bearing. For example, he always insisted that any of his killings, any of his corpses, be buried way deep into the ground. That was to ensure that if there was by any chance police dogs trained to discover bodies, the ground, um, there would be so much ground between the body and then the dogs trying to sniff it that they would not be found. And even then, he ensured that everything, these six pieces of the body parts, were wrapped in some kind of plastic. And then within that, they were placed into cheap suitcases. So multiple levels in this case, the plastic, the suitcases, and then the many feet of ground to ensure that many of his victims were never found. And so it seems like reading the information that I found, it seems like he he was pretty good at it because he did not have many killings tied to him. It was just rumored that he had as many as 60 murders, but very little evidence of those 60 murders could be tied to him. In fact, more on that here in a minute. But yes, he just continued his work. It was considered very cold-hearted, even within the mafioso figures. He was someone that loved especially to rob drug dealers. Uh, because who who else is going to complain about that? All he would do is he would uh, use his, his tactics and then put enough fear in them. He would rob them and then resell their drugs to other places. He was uh, so, I guess, upfront on this that he was able to rob Colombian drug kingpins, if you could believe it. Most other people that did something like that, they themselves would easily just be killed and never found. But in this case, because of his notoriety, because of his, I guess, high stance within his crime family uh, they knew they couldn't really do much to him and so that's why uh, he was able to have so much success he would steal hundreds of pounds in this case of drugs and then just resell them outright that wasn't just it like he would uh, steal from drug dealers he would steal from uh, foreigners anything involving drugs on their end he would just use it and then make it as a practice to sell within his family. He was also known for someone that was very careful when it came to learning more about his practice because he had books uh, in his disposal in his apartment having to do with assassinations, having to do with cutting up bodies, I guess anatomy of bodies, uh, and that in turn was something that linked him eventually to his crimes. Another thing that he would do, and this is a true essence of a sociopath is he would keep mementos of the people he killed like he would keep little tokens from them little jewelries whatever they had on them as a way to try to remember their killings in the mafia world apparently this is known as collecting totems so that in his case was one of his weaknesses because eventually when he was found uh, evidence like was trying to be gathered of these killings he was found guilty of it because of some of these items some of these totems that were within his possession but yes other information tied to him eventually he was brought in and he was totally I guess taken down by one of his own associates or someone that knew him because there was this guy it was a captain by the name of Rosario Gangi who decided to testify against Tommy Karate when he himself, this Rosario Gangi, was going to be uh, facing a hard sentence for being found driving under the influence and then figuring out that um, if he didn't make a deal, then the prosecutors would try to secure him against other heavier charges. But yes, he in turn ratted out 
this guy Tommy Karate stating that he joined him on several murders he was involved with him uh, they were able to name several names as far as the people he even stated that this guy Tommy Karate was so sociopathic that he killed uh, this guy this Captain Rosario Gangi's own girlfriend after a night of, of, of what was considered cocaine fueled sex marathon I don't know if it was with them both like in other words Tommy Karate and this guy Rosario Gangi or not but he decided to kill her outright afterward cut her body up again into the usual six pieces and then got rid of the evidence thereafter but yes eventually um, all this evidence especially by the testimony of that captain was to, was given before a court given before a judge the found the judge found it absolutely with merit and so in sentencing they were able to bring him to life sentence what the irony of it though was um, the the prosecutors were trying to get the death sentence but in that area the death sentence only happened uh, later on like it was initiated all around that area I guess in that state only after a certain time period so there were several murders that this guy did this Tommy Karate did before that time period so the defense wisely stated many of those murders happened before the death sentence was reissued in the state so that ended up saving this guy Tommy Karate's life thereafter even if he was given a life sentence at least he was no longer given a death sentence even then um, he had his own family there was Tommy Karate's aunt his sister-in-law two cousins they all came to his defense and were able to give testimony stating that he was none of the above in terms of being a sociopathic killer instead he was someone that was considered a loving and caring family member so even with all this evidence it just points out you will always have family members ready to defend someone but yes he was sentenced to life and even to this day he's apparently somewhere in Pennsylvania just living out the rest of his days there ironically the guy that ratted him out that captain he did so to try to get um, in this case a reduced sentence but it turns out the same judge that sentenced the Tommy Karate guy to life ended up giving this guy this captain uh, the standard 10 years that was originally going to come not anything as far as a reduced sentence because that judge also wanted to give them a harsh sentence for what they did so but that's it that's pretty much all the information associated with Thomas Patera again known as Tommy Karate very ruthless guy would cut up people would shoot people didn't matter if they were on contract or not and then would meticulously get rid of the evidence thereafter um, in a way that again up to 60 people cannot be found evidence on when it came to his killing so uh, anyways that's all the information tied to him so all right everybody thanks again as always take care